The math says it is. So, everybody down in the comments, including those who are actually fans of 3D printing, are going to mention things about layer lines and this kind of stuff and the quality and part strength and all that. Number one, none of those things matter. Um, the design of the part dictates the usefulness or the problems with those at all. Stop trying to 3D print injection molded parts. What we're talking about is the actual cost. So, in order to create an injection molded part, you have to first get the mold. Minimum, that mold is going to cost about $5,000 if it is a hardened steel mold that is going to be used for large quantities of parts, not some cheap aluminum mold that gets knocked out in a weekend. The bigger your part becomes, the more expensive that mold becomes. After you get that mold, you are required to purchase a minimum of 1,000 to 10,000 parts in order to use that mold once and actually make it worth mounting onto the machine, which, by the way, also incurs another setup fee. So you have the cost of the mold, which is five to ten thousand dollars. You have to buy one to ten thousand pieces, which will assume cost 50, 25 cents or whatever it happens to be. We'll say they're cheap, something small. If it's big, it's something more expensive. Um, so we'll just round it out and say twenty thousand dollars to get a batch of parts made. Then you have to ship those parts. Luckily, in the last year, that's come down. It now costs two thousand dollars to ship across the ocean from China to here if you're doing it overseas. If you're doing it in the US, then your cost of mold just doubled. Sorry to say it, but that's the way it is. Once that those parts are delivered, you then have to put them into a warehouse where they have to sit, and it costs about 25 cents a cubic foot. No, incorrect, 25 to 75 cents per cubic foot per month in order to store that stuff, depending on what kind of warehouse is it, it is. Is it in an Amazon warehouse, or is it in a shed in your backyard? Both of those have a cost. So by the end of the first year, you spent somewhere between twenty-five to thirty thousand dollars in order to create a set of products. Now you have to sell them, and you do not know if anyone is going to buy them. This is a giant risk. So that is if you went with injection molding. If you went with 3D printing, you would reach out to a 3D printing manufacturer, some service provider. You would have to pay somewhere between $100 to $500 for your first part. A first part that ideally you'd be able to sell to somebody. But then once that first part is done, you can then order 100 parts. Those 100 parts probably cost about twice as much as the one single part if you're working with someone who actually does mass production. So $500 for your first part, which by the way is way less than the 25,000 of normal injection molding in order to get your first part. So you get the first part and then you buy another hundred and let's say those cost about a thousand dollars for those hundred pieces, which is still expensive, but not unreasonable. Those hundred pieces, you can now actually go and attempt to sell. Those hundred pieces, you've, you're $1,500 in and you should be able to generate three times whatever the cost of the parts were. We'll say that you're not doing that well and it's really expensive and your part is super cheap, so you break even. You get $1,000 back. So, so far on this project, you're only out $500. With molding, you would be out $25,000 if nobody buys your thing. With 3D printing, you'd be out $1,500. So, all right, we're already a ton better. But now, let's go ahead and actually make the 10,000 parts. If you're making 10,000 parts with 3D printing, you have eliminated the $2,000 to $10,000 mold right off the bat. If the mold gets bigger, it gets more expensive. It's not uncommon to have molds that cost $100,000, especially if you're making a part that is so geometrically complex that it is difficult to mold. But that is absolutely easy to 3D print. So if you go ahead and order the 10,000 parts with 3D printing, you're down to something that's probably about 10 to 25% more expensive per part than molding. So if it costs 10 cents to mold, it's gonna cost 12 cents to 3D print. But now you don't have the mold cost. You do not have to order those 10,000, but you can. Or you can order 1,000 every month, make a deal with the manufacturer, and then never have to store anything inside a warehouse, which, by the way, is ambiguous and still kind of expensive. So is 3D printing better than injection molding? Yeah, in every single possible way. You do not have the risk of the mold. You do not have the restriction of the mold. You do not have 
any other ancillary expenses because you do not have to store. Ideally, if you're working with a 3D printer manufacturer who's fairly local, you do not have to ship very far. And you eliminate all of the risk of will somebody buy this because you can test one part, then you can test 100 parts, then you can test 1,000 parts, and you never have to expose yourself any more than the cost of those individual parts. Now, you might be breaking even for the first little while, but breaking even on the first thousand parts with 3D printing is way better than going broke on 10,000 parts with injection molding. So yeah, 3D printing is massively better than injection molding. And if you're creating a part that is impossible to mold, it is easily thousands of times better because something made rather than something having to be avoided or forgotten is way more valuable. Have a great day, everybody.